Hey guys, uh, my name is Erin Neiman. Uh, I am a host. Uh, I've been a host for more than 10 years. And uh, I'm doing this video to basically help couples out who have no idea where to begin in terms of their program flow. Um, I hope this works for you. Again, this is more of a guide. Whatever you guys want to go for, ultimately it's really up to you guys. But I'm sharing you something that has worked for me with the couples I have worked with over the years. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna lay it out really quick and then I'm gonna explain why that's the order uh, briefly. And yeah, I usually have a link at the end of the, all of this so that you can download it and uh, hope it works for you. So here we go. You start things out with the registration. After the registration, you have um, the uh, welcoming remarks of the host. And then after that, you have the hashtag. Now, before the welcome remarks, it's a good time to, of course, call on the entourage for the break of the entourage, which I'm going to mention a little bit later. Okay, um, but again, you have the welcoming remarks, um, the mentioning of the hashtag, and then you have the acknowledgement of the principal sponsors. After you acknowledge your principal sponsors, you have the acknowledgement of the parents, from uh, parents of the bride, parents of the groom. And after that, you have the parade of the entourage. Again, parade of the entourage, choose a good time to make an announcement to call them in um, uh, so that they can be ready and lined up. So parade of the entourage, after the parade of the entourage, you have the prenup ABP, which is optional, okay? So I will explain why it's optional um, after I line it everything up. So you have the prenup ABP, after the prenup ABP, you have the grand entrance of the couple. After the grand entrance of the couple, you have the first dance, followed, the, followed by the cake and wine ceremony, after that, you have the prayer before meals. And then after the prayer before meals, you have dinner with pictures, of course, with your guests. And after that, you have your growing up AVP to kind of restart the program. After that, you have your maid of honor speech. And then you have a game. And then you have the best man uh, toast. And then you have your on-site photo, followed by the parents' messages along with the dance. And then after that, you have your on-site video to kind of end the whole program, which is the highlight, of course, of everything that's happened. And then you have the thank you speech, uh, thank you message from the couple. And then you have a party, which is pretty much a man or a DJ, which is music played, whichever you guys want to go about. So that is the program flow that has worked very well for me over uh, the years. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error that's gone to this. So I'm very confident that this could possibly work for you guys. So brief explanation. Registration, of course, that's when you, of course, find out where everyone is sitting. And after that, you make a brief announcement before the welcoming remarks of the host to call in your entourage for the parade of the entourage. That's bridesmaids, groomsmen, secondary sponsors, and the best man and maid of honor. If you usually have your flower girls sometimes and your uh, ring bearers, they're kids, so usually when they come in and they're not used to the crowds, the reason that they're not part of the parade of the entourage is when they come in, they kind of cry or they get scared or they would kind of run, which is still cute and I'm sure your host can handle it. It's just uh, to start off the program, it's not usually the smoothest way to start it off, so usually they're just acknowledged and they're usually not part of the parade of the entourage. Uh, that's reasonable. So you have your bridesmaids and groomsmen, they come in in pairs, and then you have your secondary sponsors coming in in pairs, then you have your best men, maid of honor coming in in pairs. If you have two best men, one maid of honor, or vice versa, they just come in in threes, or yeah, all together. Uh, so there, you have your parade of the entourage. It's usually nice to have a nice fun music, uh, nice fun music, nice upbeat music if you want to break the ice a little bit, kind of loosen things up. If you want a nice formal entrance, then that's no problem as well. Totally up to you how you guys want to do it. But if you want something fun and kind of break the ice, then the kind of dancing coming in, uh, your MC has high energy and kind of usually kind of uh, can carry that, then that's a really nice way to kind of break the ice. So you have the parade of entourage, and now you have your prenup AVP. Now, usually prenup AVPs last for three to five minutes and you usually kind of upload it on social media to let everyone know that you're having, of course, your wedding day. Three to five minutes um, on this part, if it's gonna be a transition to the grand entrance, might be a little bit too long because usually, parade of entourage, high energy, 
and uh, if you have a three to five minute video, chances are, if you want, if it's a high energy sort of intro, okay, if every, that energy is really high, a three to five minute video kind of drops the momentum and kind of drops the energy. And if you want to transition, you really want that energy and momentum. So usually, if you can ask your videographer ahead of time, if you want your prenup AVP there, to kind of limit it down to about 45 seconds, even 30 seconds, one minute tops, I would say, that's usually enough time um, to kind of transition uh, to the grand entrance of the couple. So ideally, that would be the best, but at the end of the day, totally up to you guys. So prenup AVP, optional. If you don't want it there, and you want to transition straight from the parade of the entourage, that's totally fine. Um, and it would still be awesome. So parade of the entourage, prenup AVP optional, grand entrance of the couple, so when you guys come in to music that you love, that not music that you think would be cool or anything, music that you love because it's your day. Make sure to enjoy the music that you play, okay? So music that you love, come in. If it's choreographed, that's fine. Usually the coordinator will tell the host or the MC uh, when they will end because usually you kind of end with a dip and a kiss and that's usually the host's cue to kind of say, okay, that's the dance. But if not, if it's not choreographed and you're just gonna play a song that means something to both of you, the best time to end is usually after the first chorus. So that's about 30 seconds, um, around 30 seconds. So after the first chorus, and that's when the MC or the host usually says, okay, that was the first dance. Uh, either way is fine, choreograph or not choreograph. And then you will have your uh, uh, wedding traditions, which is the cake and wine serenity, and then the toast, very self-explanatory. After that, you have the opening prayer, which is a prayer before meals. It's usually kind of cute if you have uh, a uh, your niece or nephew, if you have like a little, a little kid kind of do it, because they kind of read it and it's kind of adorable. It kinda, it's nice, it kind of loosens things up even more. Even if they make a mistake, it's adorable. If a grown-up does it, you're just like, what's wrong with you? Anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it's usually nice if it's a little kid, it's cute, but it's totally up to you guys, whoever you guys want to kind of lead the, uh, the prayer. So after you have the prayer, that's when dinner starts. And usually um, what a host usually says, or an MC says, is uh, um, the coordinators will be going from table to table to um, have a picture with the couple. After they have a picture with the couple, you can head to the buffet, okay? So, um, and for the principal sponsors, for their tables, food will be served to them. Um, if you have a buffet, then that's usually the way it goes. If you do not have a buffet and it's served to them, it's still the same thing, it's just food is served to them. So there you go. So picture with the couple. Um, usually nice to do it within a backdrop, but if you want to go to the table and have pictures per table, that's fine too. But it's kind of nice if you have a consistent backdrop because you have, of course, a consistent backdrop. And if you go to, if you go to the table, what usually happens is you have someone eating, you have someone walking by. So you have a great picture of the group but the background is not something you have control over, so it's usually nice if your uh, guests per table go to you guys. So you have a nice consistent background um, with uh, your pictures with them. Okay, so after that, you have, of course, pictures, dinner is ongoing. Great time to resume the program would be um, when it's dessert, about the tail end of dessert. Uh, once that's happening, you have your growing up AVP. So you have your growing up AVP, and uh, this is usually, um, of course, the bride and the groom um, when they were kids growing up, and then footage of uh, pictures of them together. So usually standard is, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> standard is one minute uh, of the bride, one minute of the groom from they were when they were their kids, and one minute of them together, and that's your growing up AVP, which is a nice way to. Uh, resume the program and get their attention. Then you have the maid of honor speech. If you have two maid of honors, then it's fine. Just have them together or after each other. If it's the same with the best man, then same same thing to do. And then after the speeches from the maid of honor or the maids of honor, you have the game. Now it's always nice to have a game after dinner, shortly after dinner, because um, it gets the energy back up. If you put the game based on experience, if you put the game a little bit lower, it'll still work. It's just, um, this is the emotional part of the program where kind of the messages of the parents come in. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know, usually they cry 
and if <laughs> I remember doing this, it was a beautiful um, father-daughter dance, and there was a really nice message, heartfelt message from the dad. Everyone cried. I was crying. I was just crying. And then the coordinator wanted the game before the on-site video. So after that crying moment, everyone was just like, I was like, all right, so let's play a game. And they were like, okay. Yeah, let's play a game. I love you so much, Dad. Let's play a game now. Let's play a game. And then it's usually really emotional. And they said, okay, all right, so we're crying. Time to laugh. It's a hard transition uh, when things are very emotional. So it's usually ideal to put it up. Um, and not when things are emotional. Um, it, everyone laughs, and uh, it's easier to laugh after you not cry. So if you cry, it's hard to laugh. So that's just, of course, my word of advice uh, for that. Uh, so game, and then you have the best man, you have the toast. After the best man toast, you have the on-site photo. Uh, and uh, after the on-site photo, which is the on-site photos, the pictures were taken, of course, um, after the ceremony. After the on-site photo, you have the uh, parents' messages, and I usually ask the groom, usually it's father-daughter dance, I know that's uh, the standard, but I ask the groom, do you want to have a dance with your mom for the mother and son dance? And uh, usually they say yes, because it's also nice to dance with your mom on your wedding day, which is also very emotional. So um, a good way to do that, um, you have the parents' message of the groom from the groom's side, and then you have the mother and son dance. After that. You have the message from the parents of the bride, then you have the father and daughter dance. It's nice to have it that way, that way because you have an individual moment with your dad, you have an individual moment with your mom. I see it sometimes where um, usually they do it in a way where they do it together, where you have the father and daughter dance, you have the mother and son dance, and they're dancing together. That's all in good, but what usually happens is coming from an audience perspective, you're looking at two things and that's a moment that you want to have with your mom in its own because it's so important you know um, if you have it with you know uh, if it's shared it's the moment it, it's not as strong as impact and it's how like that moment is how because people are kind of like looking at two things so you want it individually and there's a nature of comparison if a nature of comparison I'm not saying people compare but there's a nature of comparison when you have the father-daughter dance and the mother-son dance kind of next to each other. Let's say the father and daughter are crying, really, really emotional, and then the mother and son are kind of still emotional but not crying. You're like, like, okay, they're not crying, they're crying. And then the mother and son is like, you better cry. You better do this. Keep going, because they're crying. You gotta step it up, baby. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that's what is usually done, but there is that nature of comparison. If two couples are dancing next to each other. Um, so it's always nice to have it individually. So just to recap, parents of the groom, and then you have the mother and son dance, parents of the bride, and then you have the father and daughter dance. After the father and daughter dance, usually really, really emotional, and they're crying. Of course, it's really emotional to give your daughter away. Um, and it's a perfect segue to the on-site video which is, of course, the highlight of everything that's happened on that day. And everyone's in, a, in the peak of emotion. It's a perfect time to segue. And um, yeah, just remembering moments like that have been worked very, very well. So father-daughter dance, on-site video. Then after that, you have a thank you speech from the couple. And after that, party, drink, have a good time. Usually a DJ, usually a man, up to you guys. And that is the program. And it's tight. It's uh, it's short and sweet, not too short. It's about two hours, two and a half hours long, which is the perfect time. You don't want it too long because people get tired, might get bored. So two hours, two and a half hours. And yeah, that's a program flow. I have a link for you guys to download it. I hope it works for you guys as much as it's worked for me. And if you have any questions, just feel free to just email me or just comment up, um, just comment, and I will make sure to get back to you guys. So there you go, that is a program flow, and I hope it works for you guys. Congratulations, and at the end of the day, whatever you guys wanna do, whatever makes you guys happy, it's your day, but I hope this works for you. So all the best for a special day, you guys take care.